My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. All right, guys, welcome to Property Profits Podcast. I'm your co-host, Bryce Kaminsky for Dave Dubow. And there's a lot of creativity in the real estate space. A lot of people start with single family and they might move to a duplex and they might move to, you know, the emerging short-term rental. My very special guest today, Kumi Vadir, is really pushing the limits as to what the short-term rental space really means. Kumi, how are you today? I'm awesome. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. It is a beautiful day as always. So yes. when when people think short-term rental, they typically think Airbnb. What are some other options? And then once once we get over that, we'll talk a little bit about like, why do you get started? So tell us a little bit more about what's emerging as someone who's really focused on that medium to short-term rental space. Uh, as far as the short-term rental, to, to me, it's finding something that is more of a hook. Uh, it, to me, it's it's not it's not good enough just to be a really great house. Um, mm-hmm. You have to have something, something that somebody says, I really want to be there. And of course, Airbnb pushes the um, more interesting places, uh, mm-hmm. but sometimes you don't necessarily have that in, in your city. So you have to make your place stand out. And that's where, for, for me, it was making the outdoor space, uh, the kind of the prime focus. In, inside, it is beautiful, but the outside, that's where you want to be. So that's, uh, for yeah, us, was, that's worked. Yeah, I was looking at the photos and it looks fantastic. It looks like a little yeah. resort. Yes. And so um, when people are working on those Airbnbs, because you you do, you, you hit the nail on the head there is that it's got to be kind of like a, a special place mm-hmm. to really get that, that dollar that you're looking for. How did you determine where, and then ultimately, as we were talking before the call, when to stop investing in that thing? Because, you know, there's so many, you see the things of selections, a hot tub, this and that, mm-hmm. bicycles, and you could try to check off all the boxes. How did you approach that situation? I, I knew we we have a lot of dogs, so I knew for certain I wanted a, a pet friendly place, and that would put us into a that that in itself would put us into a category that sets us apart. Just just the fact that we're pet friendly. Um, the other thing is that I I personally don't have a per pet or a per pound uh, requirement. It's just it's thirty dollars, period. So. I, I know that if you travel and you have normally two or three dogs, it can be as much as far as the pet deposit as it is for the uh, the rental itself. So personally, I chose just to go simple, $30. It's a nice place. And so far, I've not had any bad, bad things happen uh, because the people who rent it take extremely good care. And uh, I think they're appreciative that they can have their dogs with them. So um just that alone accounts for probably 60% of the people who book bring at least one, one pet. Yeah. The, the so. pet thing is huge because if you're yeah. traveling, you either got to like keep them in the car or something like right. that, like right. or secretly have the pet in, in the Airbnb, exactly. which a lot yes. of people just sneak it in. Yes. So it's yeah. nice to be able to check that box. Now, how did you decide to get into real estate? What inspired you to, to start looking for, um, you know, real estate to invest in? Uh, I, I, well, basically watching, uh, building our own house. We we built our house about uh, 10 years ago and that process was exciting. I loved every single aspect of it. I loved the the design and, and picking out everything and, and watched a million hours of HGTV. I just so, but once we, mm-hmm. once we were here and we completed it, it's like, okay, that's over, but I'm not, you know, I wasn't fulfilled as far as, um, as far as wanting to do more. So uh, when we got to a place where a rental property was an option, then uh, I, I wanted to pursue a rental property, but 
long-term rents are not really that good. Mm -hmm. So uh, I found a property that I felt like when I walked in, it had an odd layout. And I said, you know, this could work as a long-term rental and a short-term rental at the same time. And uh, by putting a wall, just literally blocking off a doorway, turning it into a wall. And mm -hmm. that's that's what we did. So we, we have a long-term renter that pays essentially the, the mortgage. And then the short-term mm -hmm. rental is the um, cash flow. Yeah, the cash flow. Is that, yeah. is that the... You were talking about it was remind me of the term pad something. Okay, no, that's entirely different. That's, that's the next one you're working right, on. Okay, right, we'll get right, to that right. in a second. So yes, it seems like cash flow and the creativity is mm -hmm. something that you're really attached to. So what do you like most about that short term rental or like the the non let's let's just say long term rental is to the side. What do you like right. most about the focus that you're in right now? Um, you know, I, I love when I go personally and I travel to an Airbnb or somewhere else, I love walking in and saying, wow, this is a really awesome place. And I want my guests to feel exactly the same way. And so when, when they come in, I try to do something special, something that is for them, not just any guest. So in other words, every time I have a new guest come in, I have to change things because it's, it's catered to them. Um, some people are here for a birthday anniversary, you know, some kind of celebration. It, it may just be a getaway. And I try to do something again to, to welcome them. And so it's, it's, it's the excitement the joy of thinking okay some you're making somebody's day uh, mm -hmm. or weekend or and and a lot of my a lot and another thing that we do is we do one night stays uh some people do two and three minimums but you know yeah. sometimes you can just get away for a night and i i have a lot of local people also and and in the groups they'll they'll say no local people if i didn't do local people i'd probably 50 percent of my business would go down because I literally have people within the same town or within two or three hours. They want a, a vacation, a mini vacation without having to leave to go out of town. Mm -hmm. So it, it works beautifully. So have there been any uh, major challenges you've had to overcome in your journey so far with real estate? The, the challenge has been that again, I went in with a simple budget and very doable uh, but once I got in there, it, you know, you get in, it's an old house, it's 70 years old. So once you get in there, you start uncovering things. And I, again, once I started uncovering, then I thought, well, instead of just leaving something the way it is, the floors, they were okay, but they weren't great. Take up the floors. Well, then you take up the floors and the floors are soft in some places you've got to, you, you so you just, you've, you uncover things and then you might as well just go all out rather than just putting it back to okay. And so that's kind of where I went. It's a very small space. Uh, it's less than 400 square feet, but I tried to make it as impactful as possible in that, in that space. Yes, def definitely. I, I always call it the can of worms business. You're opening, yes. <laughs> opening the can of worms over and over again. So yes, when it comes to real estate in your journey so far, what do you think your secret sauce is? Like what comes easy, easily to you that maybe some other people might find difficult? You know, I, I think that like looking at, uh, I love to look at houses. I'm actually getting my, taking my realtor's test Wednesday um, because I decided, yeah, yeah I, well, if I'm going to invest in properties, might as well you know, be able to buy them myself. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I, yes, so that's, that's what I'm doing now. But I think that when I look at a property, I, I look past what it is and, and I look at what it can be. Um, and I think that a lot of people have difficulty seeing, you know, well, if you put a wall here, if you take this wall down or, you know, I, I look at it in those mm -hmm. terms, not, not the way it is, but the way it could be. So yeah, definitely. You think your HGTV uh, yeah. Yeah. marathon <laughs> might have kicked, kicked in I, a little bit there? I think that after 10 years, it absolutely has uh, opened my eyes to look, you know, look at it from, from a different lens, so to speak. Okay, so where do you see this business uh, being in, let's say, a 12-month time frame, this time next year? For the Airbnb? Yeah, for, for what you're working on as an investor, because the Airbnb 
you might buy it, you might sell it, you might raise the rent, you might do do whatever with that asset. But look at the business for everyone at home and say, in, in 12 months, where do I want to be? What does that look like for you? In, in 12 months, so we're going a little bit different direction. We're going more to the medium term rentals. And okay. um, that is going to, we, we just bought, uh, closed on a property on Friday, uh, but I plan to have 10 properties by the end of 2024 go in different markets, not not just uh, locally, but um, going to the medium-term rentals versus the short-term rentals. Okay. And so you've you've gotten your hands in, into the game on a couple of properties and you've accomplished, you know, quite a few things. Most people never step in into the game. So with everything that you've done so far, what would you say your biggest obstacle now once you've, you know, you've got over a few so far, but what would you say your biggest obstacle is today? Well, in in order to to scale, at e, you know, even getting another property, um, obviously, you know, it takes money. I think mm -hmm. that uh, the the market for investors doing um, it, it it is actually not difficult to find a loan as far as a, a mortgage part, mm -hmm. but coming up with the down payment, and then it's not just so twenty percent down, okay. But it's not just 20% down. You have all those costs that they tack in. And that goes from, okay, I can handle 20% to, wow, am I going to pull this off? So um, by the time that they put all those costs in. So in, in, in order to scale, you have to kind of figure out, okay, I'm sinking this money in here. And, and we're going to go more in the burr category. Mm -hmm. um, but so getting a property, getting it where it needs to be, upfitting it where it needs to be, adding value to it, refinancing it, cash out, refinance all mm -hmm. over again. So that that's kind of my my business plan. Yeah. Okay. So um, primarily, what are you doing to fund this project here as you move towards 2024? We talked a little bit. You can tell people a little bit about the funding story that I think they would appreciate hearing. But after that, let's talk a little bit more about how you plan to fund the rest of the uh, the plan. Okay, well, so I, I found a house that was absolutely perfect for the business model that we're going with. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything went beautifully. As a matter of fact, everything was going so smooth that I asked myself, at what point is this going to, am I going to get a hiccup? Because there were no hiccups. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we found funding, we're approved. We've got, I mean, the appraisal came in literally perfect. Um, and everything was great. We're going to close in like a week and a half. And then the, the, uh, with a DSCR loan for people who want to do uh, a loan on a rental property, they have to do rental. Uh, they have to do like a rental forecast appraisal. Mm -hmm. Well, that part didn't come in as high as I thought it was. And it, uh, I did market research. I had my realtor do market research and mm -hmm. we were good. But whenever the appraiser did his appraisal, he was under about four hundred dollars, and wow. yeah, so that changed the dynamics. Um, so I had to kind of immediately go back and say, okay, we're going to do a short-term rental loan. So um, that just meant that we had to repull the credit, and at that point, you ha you have to score higher than you do mm -hmm. on uh, just a tra traditional loan. Well, we were only nineteen points off. And uh, he said, okay, if you can pay off this card and, and pay this card to this amount, it'll, it'll be good. So we did that. Said, all right, it takes about 24 to 48 hours. Give me proof that you paid it off. We did. And 24, 48 hours happened. It didn't, ha it didn't update. Every day, it didn't update. So finally, I said, okay, if, if we're paying for this, I don't want to pay for it because this has been a week and a half and it's not updated yet. So he called the, the mortgage guy, called the company and whoever had our file had apparently got fired and mm -hmm. nobody else picked up the file. There's, so, there's the shoe dropping. You're waiting you for the, shooter, yes. the other shoe to drop. Yes, there it is. absolutely. So we had to put our, we had to extend our closing date. And um, so then the lender was a, we finally got it updated. It was good. We're good to go. Um, but the problem is, is that in order to do the traditional financing, you have so many days before you can actually close yeah. the loan. Our seller, her financing was falling, falling through 
actually mm -hmm. on Monday today. Um, so this was on Wednesday of last week. We weren't going to be able to close the loan if we went with a traditional loan. Yeah. So I decided that the only way this is going to happen is if I find a, a, an, an investor that had cash. So I went on uh, a Facebook Facebook group that I'm a part of, and I just put it out there. This is the deal. This is the terms. And if anybody can help me and oh, literally I went to bed that night and I didn't have an answer. When I woke up in the morning, I had two people that responded. And um, so one of them said, I've, I've got the cash and I can go. And literally within 24 hours, they wired the funds and we were able to close the next day. There you go. So, yeah. I love it when it works out. I mean, there's stories oh, yeah. where it doesn't and, yes. and we need bridge loans and extensions. So I'm glad it played out. So from this point forward, what are you doing now to kind of raise money from those existing connections that you have already? Well, you know, I, I looked at it as because sometimes when you have obstacles, you think, OK, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. Maybe this isn't a good thing. Yeah. And but it was like, no, the numbers work. The house is great. There, there's too many positives. Um, and then I realized what was not the good thing was the DSCR loan. Mm -hmm. That was not the good thing because we were having to put the 20% down plus the closing cost, blah, blah, blah. And then it was a, a five, five year prepayment penalty. So it, you couldn't refinance. Yeah. And that means our money was going to be literally locked up for five years unless we paid a, a penalty. So by doing it this way, we're going to do the upfits, the house is going to reappraise in 60 days, and we're going to add about $100,000 worth of value. So we're going to do a cash out refinance and then take that money, get all our invested money back, pay off our investor, and then start all over again. Yeah, so. sometimes that that flexibility is really important in the burst yes. strategy. So yes. Are you a find the deal and then the money, or do you prefer to have the capital lined up and then go looking for deals? I'm kind of a find the deal because there's money out there. You just, I mean, there's money out there. You mm -hmm. just have to, you have, you have to know where to look. Um, but I feel like if you find a really good deal that makes sense, it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to get the money. So um, that's, I'm not saying I, I have ideas of where the money's going to come from. And I definitely know if, you know, as far as financing it, that, you know, that we're going to be able to qualify, you know, as far mm -hmm. as that goes. But um, finding the deal is, you have to find a good deal where the numbers work. And it, it, you can't cut it close because you you need to have something that's going to be worth more when you're finished with it mm -hmm. than it was you know, to start with. So. I, ideally, de definitely. <laughs> Um, when, when people invest significant money, um, with anything, whether it's buying a car, buying a house, investing in deals with, uh, people such as yourself and myself, they kind of need to know you like you and ultimately trust you. We've all heard that, you know, like no trust, right. what kind of things do you do to kind of build up those things? Uh, I, I w personally, I try to know as many answers as I can so that if you ask me a question, I have an answer. And if I don't have that specific answer, I know I know where to go to get it. Um, I, I really try to think of all the everything because it, it's just like with the, the loan that I had a problem, the problem with. I knew that if if we didn't work one way, we could go a different direction. And I didn't mm -hmm. really think about the cash part until until it and we wouldn't have had to go the cash part if the seller hadn't had her situation we no. we would have just closed tomorrow normal you know normal loan no big deal so that that caused a, an extra challenge was closing on time important to you acquiring that deal like where you had mentioned some other people were bidding on this property but you were able to say i'll close on time was that the difference maker for this deal for you um no for no them? on 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 this on this property it wasn't other people bidding it was that the the seller she had already put in an offer on her house prior to us coming up, going under contract oh so she needed to close to buy the next one exactly exactly okay so yeah and you definitely don't want to back that up because then it's it, a chain reaction and it it was a horrible chain reaction and yeah. and for us if if we didn't close we just moved on to the next investment property for her this is her home 
yeah. and it was it would have been a scramble it would have been yes terrible so um if people want to reach out to you connect with you um what should they do uh the i, I guess you obviously uh I don't, I don't have a social media necessarily yet. Other some than people Facebook. throw their email out or some okay. people will throw out their phone number and say, call me. I mean, yes. it really depends <laughs> on how far out, uh, you want to want to go. I mean, no, yeah, you can, you can email me, you can call me, uh, look me up on Facebook and send me a message that way. So do you want me to actually give? Yeah. Give Cause number? they're going to, they're okay. listening in the car right now. Okay. 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 Yeah. So what's so. the uh, email or what's the phone number? And then, uh, yeah. Okay, so e email is kumi, K-U-M-I-V, as in Victor, R-E-I, at gmail.com, and then phone number 336-858-0644. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate yeah. your time, and uh, as always, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care, and we'll see you on the next interview.